everybody welcome back in this one I'm going to go over my GTX 45R remote mount a transponder with ADS-B in and out and also a little mini rack that I'm building for the back of the plane that'll house both this transponder and also my remote radio uh, but uh, hope you enjoy it cheers Hi everybody, I figured I'd share this. I didn't find too much information on this unit. This is uh, the Transponder GTX 45R. So I got the remote version of it. It's pretty straightforward to hook up. Uh, power going up, obviously, uh, though the pins have a, a limitation on the amount of current. So you kind of got to use dual pins to do it. You've got an RS-232 connection that goes up to your G3X. Um, which allows you to control it. And if you see here, transponder and, oh, if I hit the transponder button, it brings this up for me. So it works perfectly. The, um, so that's the RS-232. There's also an ethernet connection that will actually go up to the um, 650 nav when I put it in. Uh, but uh, right now I haven't got that here. But the real thing is I wanted to connect it up, make sure it was all working and operating correctly. Uh, so I set it all up, connected the antenna. I have the CI-105 antenna, which works just fine. And then on here, if you'll see, if I go and do split screen and I go over here, you can actually see, uh, there's no data here but let me uh, make sure here I've got my connections on uh, there we go now you can see there's traffic so it shows it now in order to do this I actually have the scale set so that it shows all traffic this is way outside of what you'd normally see but I did want to kind of show it um, but in here you can actually say you can see some some of the information you can put on it um, it also gives you an update on the status, but uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you won't receive weather while you're on the ground just because there, there are no stations being able to receive it. But my transponder is there. So it works pretty good. Um, it didn't when I first connected it up. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is if we go back, oh, menu, menu, Let's go to setup, connects. Oh, that one's fun. Oh, well, actually, here's my setup for connects. The FISB is automatic. Those are both automatic. You could change it if you wanted to. But if you go into Bluetooth, what you'll see here, give it a minute to update. See the GTX here is not connected. I can connect the GTX. It is now connected. I have auto connect on. So what it's using is it's actually using Bluetooth to bring this data back to the unit. Okay, I don't have, see so here you can see all the traffic. Uh, I don't actually have it wired. Now one of the things you can do is you can actually run an RS-232 from here up to the unit. Um, I will do that for my MFD, just that way I have both a Bluetooth and a hard connection up to my MFD, just to make sure it works fine. But uh, you see here it works, it works just great. You can see the traffic, and if I go to the map page here, And I probably haven't got it set up to show the traffic. Oh, actually, here it is. Yeah, it's very hard to see just because the traffic, it's busy. But if you hit it, you can see what the traffic is. It's ground speed. So it works pretty good. In order to get it to work, <clears throat> one of the catches with this is if you don't have a GTN uh, navigator connected to it, the Bluetooth should be automatically on. So you can also use the Bluetooth. I have it connected to my iPad. So I can see all of that same information on my iPad as well, which is very slick. Uh, but it didn't work. Tried to work with Garmin, couldn't, uh, couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. 
they were trying to get me to do various things. They said, you really needed your, your navigator connected, but, uh, you know, the things they suggested to me just didn't work. So what I ended up figuring out is if I go and restart this, so let me do that. I'm going to bring it up in configuration mode. So if you just hold a menu key, it'll bring up the configuration. And I apologize for being upside down, but that's the only way I can have this on a bench. So you can see here, it's going to be configuration mode. And there's a couple of things that you need to do. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure your RS-232 configuration is correct. So you'll see here, port two is the port I have connected for the GTN. So it's connects port. I've got all the other ports configured for other things and uh, when I get it connected my GTM will actually bring over my MapX data. You want to make sure these are correct set up correctly. I think that may have been part of my problem um, when it didn't work because one of those configurations was incorrect so maybe it was expecting something else on an RS-232 port. And then the second thing you have to do is if you go to transponder You'll see here, if I go configuration, see here it's GTR, you can see it's status, it's active. I have information in here, but you'll see right here, HSDB devices. I've got it set to GTS. So that way I'm thinking, I'm tricking it, saying at least for the moment, there is no GTN. I think that makes sure that it turns Bluetooth on automatically. If you have the GTN connected, you have to turn the Bluetooth on through the GTN. I had tried that before, it didn't seem to work. Um, but once I went in and did the RS-232 ports and did this, it all seemed to work just fine. But uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You'll see here on the GTN side, the port is configured as connects format one. Um, nothing too exciting, pretty straightforward. Anyway, I couldn't find a ton of information on it. So I thought I'd share that. And especially, you know, what I wasn't sure is maybe the antenna wasn't correct. Maybe it had a cabling problem. I just wasn't positive. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. And now I've got, uh, the only thing I really have left here to do is I'll run that RS-232 port to the MFD when I put it in and it should be uh, good to go. But you see, it comes up, transponder, there it goes. I got the status of it in here. You can also do a couple of things. I've got it set up so you can actually disable the ADSB. You can also put it maintenance mode, which I don't do. Uh, but like I said, if you go menu, menu, setup, Bluetooth, and in here, it should auto connect to the, uh, to the GTR. Uh, GTX, sorry, 45R. And uh, even though it says it's not connected here, what's interesting is if I go to the page with this guy and I go, right, you can see the traffic's already there. So it's getting that information anyway. Um, but it, uh, like I said, it works really well. So I thought I'd share that. Hopefully uh, it's useful. For somebody out there that's trying to get it to work and maybe you're running into some problems with it um, and then this data link page just kind of gives you a show shows you the status of it you can see the pressure settings and uh, back in here bluetooth still got to do some checking to see what difference it makes if this is not connected or is connected doesn't seem to make any difference but uh, anyway, I figured I'd share this. Hope you find this useful. And by the way, I never really intended to purchase this yet, but it looked like it was gonna be a bit of a delay. So I thought I'll order it. Maybe I'll get it August, came in early. So now I'm gonna, now I'll actually start figuring out how I'm gonna fabricate the mount for it. 
because I'm going to mount both this and my radio in the back. So I'm going to build a frame up so I can have them in a little bit of a rack, set it in the back and probably have it so that I can put in uh, my XM if I want it as well. And uh, what I'm looking at here is my avionics rack that I built for the rear of the plane. And basically this is set up so that my GTX 45R will go on the bottom. So if I take the unit here, I would slip that in here like so. And then it would be bolted onto the sides. And then of course the GTX would actually be inserted through the front and then just uh, attached. And what's nice about this, the connectors will come out the back. They're permanently attached. And I've got these rails here for now. These rails where maybe I can use them for tying down the wires. Not sure yet. And then on the second shelf that's right here, that's where <clears throat> my remote radio would go. I can't fit it in there right now because the fleet goes in the way. But uh, once I get it riveted, then that shouldn't be a problem. But that would insert right in here like that. And then I have these spots where I'll actually just bolt it down. So that's the second one. And then finally, on the top, I've left space uh, to put in my uh, XM satellite receiver. Um, if I'm going to do that, I haven't quite decided yet, but very likely I will. And that just gives me a spot to mount it right on top. It's standing a little high now because uh, the bottom has played on here and I've just got a click coat on, but this would actually be uh, flush. And then I can put a rail on the bottom that I would attach to the frame in the back of the plane. Maybe one of the, <clears throat> one of the stringers that run through the back. Haven't decided yet, but at least played on the bottom it gives it some rigidity and then on top of that uh, it gives me lots of options for how I can mount it I know a number of people have done this various ways some people just mount each of the individual units and just mount them right on to the back uh, but I really wanted to have a little rack and then this way it's nice and clean and the wires are all coming from a central location and then on top of that um, you know, this will be nicely attached next to where the battery goes. Well, it's a little offset from the battery, but between this and then I'll have my ELT in the same kind of location, just mounted up on the side, if you'd imagine. Anyway, I figured I'd share this. Uh, nothing too crazy about making it. I just went out, actually, I went to Home Depot and just got some of this uh, angle aluminum. This is one inch by uh, one sixteenth use that that gives me the nice rails that i wanted uh just drilled a bunch of holes and uh yeah that's about it nothing uh nothing crazy about it just takes a little bit of uh planning and uh i don't know i may actually trim these back a little bit i don't need them to be that wide maybe i'll cut that in half it just keeps it rigid but you don't need all that piece poking out it doesn't hurt it but I might just do that to clean it up but I figured I'd share this and uh, I'll bring you back once I get it all riveted together. The only thing I'm not sure of yet is I'm still trying to decide, do I permanently, do I screw this piece in or do I rivet it? Uh, I may rivet it because this shouldn't come out again. The connectors go on to the back. So if I needed to, I could still remove the connectors. Um, yeah, I may just rivet it in rather than try and put the screws in here. Riveting it'll be pretty easy. Basically, I've just got in the side here. Uh, actually, let me pull it out. So what they've got is this spot here, uh, which is countersunk. So you could just put the rivets in these holes. So three on each side and then uh, be done with it. You could screw it in too. I just haven't decided yet. The only thing that may make me want to screw it in is it depends on how I attach this to the to the uh, plane. Um, if I run rails, 
I might want to get access to it and I might want to take it off in the future, you never know. And if I did that, I'd need to be able to get down here and maybe have a couple of screws that I could take out, in which case this thing would be in the way. Uh, but uh, eh, not quite sure yet, still have to figure it out.